Hey, it's Kelly with RV Wholesaler. Today I'm gonna to show you how to set up your brand new XLR fifth wheel today. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first things first, after you get pulled into your new campsite, after you've unhooked from your truck, okay, which we'll get to that in another video, you're gonna come right underneath the nose of the fifth wheel and you're gonna see a white button right underneath here to raise and lower the front legs on the unit, okay? And that's gonna level us from front to back and then from side to side, you'll actually put boards or blocks underneath the tires to level it from left to right. But front to back, we're gonna level with this button right here. And what next thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you where to put the level right inside the door. So right inside the door, leave your steps up and you're gonna take your level and you're gonna set it right here on the actual floor of the unit, not on the threshold. And then you'll go and you'll run the front jacks up or down to get it right in the parameters of the level for you. All right, now that we have the coach leveled front to back and side to side, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run down the stabilizer jacks. So on this fifth wheel, you're just gonna have one set back here in the back and they are powered. So one button here is gonna run both sides. So this side will go down first. Once it meets the ground, the other side will go down. Um, I already have some stacker blocks set up here so your jack has a little more stability and it's not gonna sink into the ground. So you're just gonna hit the extend button. It's gonna lower down. Now these are just for stabilizing the coach. So once it hits the ground, you just go a little bit more and that's it. So it's not for changing tires or lifting the unit off the ground or leveling left to right. This style here is just for stabilizing the coach. So when you're walking around on the inside, it's gonna act as a foundation, okay? We'll go around and check out the other side. The next thing we're gonna do here now that we have the coach leveled, we have our stabilizer jacks down, we're gonna come in here and we're gonna run out the slide outs. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the blue lever here to release the steps. We're gonna back those down. Now one thing you can do is you can adjust these legs so if you're on uneven terrain, so that they're very sturdy. Go in here, we'll hit the button to run out the slide outs. So the slide out buttons and the awning buttons are all labeled for you. So we'll go ahead and get that slide out ran there. And then we'll go ahead and do the awnings as well. Now that we have the slide outs out, the unit's leveled, we're gonna come up here to our propane bottle. Now on the fifth wheel on this unit, there's gonna be one on both sides to keep the unit more level. Um, we're gonna open up both bottles all the way open, okay? And then that way, if one runs out, it'll automatically switch over to the other side. And then what we'll do is, we'll go in and we'll get the gas lines purged. So now that we have everything else set up here, we just made sure our gas bottles were on. We're gonna come here to the cooktop. We're gonna raise this up. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna light one burner. So I'm gonna turn this knob just slightly to the left. And this one does have a sparker knob. So I'm gonna turn that just like your barbecue at home. So I'm gonna turn this, push in and turn, spark it. I'm gonna light all three, turning those knobs. Now I'm gonna let those burn for about 20 to 30 seconds. I'm also gonna turn the exhaust fan on to pull that extra heat out of the coach. Okay, now that we have a good solid blue flames, I'm gonna go ahead and shut each burner off. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna actually purge the gas lines to make sure that there's no air in the lines. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to work the water heater and that way that will fire properly. So out here at the water heater, First things first with the water heater. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that it is full of water before you light it on gas or run it on electric. So we're gonna come here, you're gonna sort of lift up slightly on this pressure release valve. So you got some water squirting out of there, that's totally fine. But that lets you know that the water is all the way to the top, that it's in safe mode to go ahead and fire up on gas or run it on electricity. Also, you're gonna have two push button resets here, which are the base of the breakers for the, the reset on the 110 side. And then right down here at the bottom left-hand corner, you're also gonna see an on-off button. That's to run it on electricity. All right, as we're moving along, getting our RV set up here, getting ready to camp, we made sure we have water in the water heater. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna flip the water heater switch. 
That's a DSI water heater, so direct spark ignition. It means it's automatically gonna ignite for you. Now you're also gonna see an FLT, which is a fault light over here. So if you see that light on, it's not actually lit or working, okay? Now, the reason that light's there, so you don't have to run out and check your water heater all the time, um, but we will go out and check it here in just a second to make sure it has fired up. Now, the big thing would be, say you've been out all day, you come back and you notice that red light's on, that means it tried to light and it didn't, because it'll try three times, and if it doesn't light, that'll come on. If it comes on, flip the switch off, wait 10 seconds, and turn it back on and try again. Let's go out and check out the blue flame. You can see that blue flame right there. That means you know you're up and running and you're all set to go. All right, so after you've been camping all weekend, the next thing we're gonna do is, is we're gonna show you how to empty your wastewater tank. So the first thing you're gonna do on this unit, it does have a spot back here where they give you to store your sewer hose. So you just untake, unscrew that cap, you'll pull out your sewer hose here, and then we'll head up and I'll show you how to empty out your tanks. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to hook up the sewer hose and empty out all your tanks and clean off your um, sewer hose. You're gonna see a couple different ports here because this unit does have two baths, so you're gonna have a couple different connections. Now the nice thing is they're all labeled for you here, right to left, left to right, so you know which one each one's for. Also a good rule of thumb is any three inch pipe or a black handle is gonna be a toilet. Any inch and a half pipe or a gray handle is going to be sinks or shower. So that way you kind of can recognize just by a quick glance what you're working with, okay? And all right, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to pull the cap off of the sewer connection and then the same lineup will line up here on the sewer hose. So you'll take that, latch that on. You're going to take the other end of the hose, put it into the dump station, and then you're going to pull that black valve so it's gonna come out, and that's gonna open it up. And depending on how much waste is in the tank, that's gonna take maybe 30 seconds up to a couple minutes to go ahead and empty out. While that valve is still out, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to screw in to your black tank flush. Back here, so again, this unit has two bathrooms, so it's gonna have two black tank flushes. One here, one up above, which we'll show you in a second. You're gonna take your water hose, and you're gonna screw it right into this black tank flush, okay? Once that's screwed all the way on there, you're gonna turn the water on. You're gonna let that run for about 15 to 20 seconds. That's gonna actually rinse out that sewer hose and it's gonna clean the inside of that black tank because there's sensors inside that tank which is allow, allows it to read on the monitor panel and that's gonna clean those off as well. So you're gonna let that run for about 15 to 20 seconds. Shut the water off. You're gonna unscrew it from here. Okay, put the cap back on. And then you're going to come back down here, after you shut the water off, close your black valve. Now we're going to go look at the next one. All right, so here's the next connection. It's going to work the exact same way. We're just going to hook our sewer hose up. We're going to pull the black valve again first. So we're going to let that run out. We're going to empty out the black tank while that valve is still open. Now this one here does have a second valve. You're going to pull that one as well, which again is the three inch pipe. So you're gonna pull that, let that run through. You're gonna come up here. Again, second black tank flush here. Thread this on the same way as you did the one on the back. Turn the water on. You're gonna let that run through for about 30 seconds until it's got the sewer hose all rinsed out. So you're gonna let that run through. It's gonna rinse out your sewer hose. Once that's done, shut the water off. Come back up here. I always like to just unthread this just so you can make sure the water's off because if it's still on and you shut those valves, it's gonna go back up through the toilet. So now that the water's off, I can shut my two black valves here, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the gray valve, which is gonna be your sinks and your shower, dish water, things like that. That's gonna finish rinsing out the rest of that sewer hose. Then you're all set. You've dumped all your tanks, close that off, pull your sewer hose off, store it back where we got it out from. All right, so the next thing we're gonna go over here is the water system. So you have a couple options, one being a city water connection, which is the left side here, which is labeled for you, and then the other being the fresh water connection. So the first one we're gonna go over is the fresh water connection. So this is gonna be if you're boondocking or you don't have water hookup at the site, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull that cap off of there, and you're gonna come here, and you're gonna thread on 
this hose, okay, so you're gonna turn it counterclockwise to thread it on there. Now, one thing you always wanna make sure of is that your freshwater drain is closed. And that's gonna be a valve right behind the back axle of the unit, which we'll get to here in just a second. So this here is you're gonna hook up and then you're gonna run off of your 12 volt water pump to pressurize your system. So go ahead and turn the water on and let that fill up. And there's gonna be a valve right beside the, the drain valve, which is the overflow. Once it starts pouring out of there, you can shut it off and you know you're filled up, okay? So let me show you where those valves are here just really quick. So directly behind the rear axle here, um, you're gonna see those two valves I was talking about. The one on the right side that looks like the hose, this is gonna be the overflow. So once the water starts pouring out of here, then you know the fresh water tank is filled up. So, and then you can shut the water off. This one here is gonna be the drain. So when you're done using it, you're gonna pull that out and it's gonna drain your fresh water tank. That way you're not pulling that extra water weight around. Now, before you fill it, you wanna have it pushed in. So just like the sewer valves, pull it out to drain it, push it in to keep the water in. Alrighty. All right, so the next one's gonna be the city water connection, okay? Now this is gonna be if you have water hookup at the site, so wherever you're camping, they have pressurized water. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to purchase a water pressure regulator, and you're gonna to wanna to thread that onto your camper, okay, to the city water connection. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna reduce the PSI down to about 45 PSI, 40 to 50 PSI, just in case you're camping where the pressure's a lot higher, you're not gonna take the chance of bursting any lines or fittings. And you're gonna grab your hose and you're gonna thread that into the water pressure regulator. So just make sure that the water going into your camper goes through the pressure regulator before it goes into the coach. Now when you're hooked up to this city water connection, it's gonna bypass the fresh water tank. You won't need to use your pump because it already has pressure coming from the city water connection. Turn that on, you'll have water at the taps, everything will be good to go. We'll move on down to the back of the coach. All right, so we're gonna make our way here to the back corner of the unit, um, which is gonna be your fuel station. So this is gonna be, you can fill this up for your side-by-side, -side, or if you have a different type of fuel you wanna use for your ATVs, what have you. You just wanna unscrew that, fill it up at the gas station, what have you. And then right in here, what you're gonna to use to unlock this, this is gonna be your nozzle, just like you would have at the, the gas station. You'll pull that out. And then to turn this on, you're gonna hold down the off button until it flashes. Then go to the on, hold down the off button again until it flashes, and then go to the on. And that's gonna go ahead and turn the actual pump on for you, so you can pump fuel into your ATV, UTV, what have you. And then to shut it off, you're gonna hit the off button. Now what that's doing is it's sucking the rest of the fuel out of the line so that fuel's just not sitting in that um, fuel line for you. And then you're all set to go. The reason there's that sequence is, is so no one can just come up and pump your fuel out of it. Um, so an added safety feature there. And then you just go ahead and lock that up. We'll go around here and check out the other side and then we'll go check out the goodies on the inside. All right, so back here on the back side, I will show you how to put down the ramp door. All you're gonna do is lift up on this. And this does already have holes set up so you can put a lock through there. And you're just gonna lift up on that handle, open that up. Same thing on this side. And you're just gonna lower it down. Super lightweight. Lowers down, then you can use it as the, the ramp. Also, it is gonna be set up with the cables. So you can set up the patio, which this will open up. These, you just lift up and you'll latch each one onto here on both sides and it'll be set up parallel to the ground for the patio. Let's go in here and check out the inside. Moving inside the coach here, right inside the main entry door, you're gonna see the big monitor panel here, which is gonna be the slide out buttons for the main entry. Now you're also gonna have a button, which we'll get to in a little bit, for the bedroom slide out. Now both of your awning buttons are gonna be here, extend, retract, so it's all spelled out for you. Also, you're gonna have some lights for the living area. You're gonna have your button for the water pump. Now again, this water pump switch is an on-demand water pump, so anytime you're hooked to your fresh water connection, you're gonna flip this switch, just leave it on, once you turn the faucet on, the pump will kick on. You shut the faucet off, the pump kicks off. Now, if you're running off your city water connection, you're not gonna to need to use your pump, so it'll just run off the pressurize of the system. 
I already showed you the water heater. Again, this is for gas. And then if you want to run it off electric, you'll flip the switch on the bottom left-hand corner. Awning lights, heat pads, which you can leave those on, those will shut off. Um, once the temperature gets up above 40 degrees typically. All right, so on the monitor panel here, you're gonna see each button is labeled. You hold down the button and then up top here will light up, letting you know where your tanks or your battery level is. So holding that down on the battery, you can tell it's fully charged. Fresh water tank is empty. Black one, black two, since it has two bathrooms for both toilets. And then your gray for your sinks and your shower. You just hold those buttons down and it'll let you know when you need to dump them. So this unit is equipped with two air conditioner units. You will have a separate thermostat in the master bedroom, which will work the same exact way. You're gonna hold down the power button till it lights up blue. And then you're gonna tap the mode to take it from heat to fan, cool. So AC, you set the temperature and you can adjust the fan speeds or you can run it off the thermostat. So for instance, if we go to cool, set the temperature down to 60, Fan speed A for auto, which will run off of the thermostat. The air conditioner will automatically kick on. Hold down the power button to shut the unit off. And the furnace will work the same exact way. It fires up, runs automatically, as well as the second AC in the master. And there's a separate thermostat just for that unit. All right, as we move up the hallway here, the next switch we're gonna see is the generator switch. This is gonna allow you to fire up the generator right from the cabin. So you're gonna hold down on the stop prime button. So you're giving it fuel. Once it lights up, flashes green. Fires right up for you. And that'll run your entire coach on the generator. Also, it does have a switch, which will take it so you don't overload it. And if you're plugged in and you fire up the generator, it automatically switches to the other side so it doesn't overload the unit. So we'll go up in here and we'll check up the master. All right, so up here in the master, you're gonna see a, obviously a light switch here and you're gonna see a slide out button here. This is just for the wardrobe slide out to run that in and out. Run it in and out, that's all power. That will run off 12 volt as well. I'll show you how that works there. And then right above that switch is gonna be a separate thermostat just for the second AC in the master. So this one will work just like the one I already went over with you. Hold down the power button so it turns on blue. Go to the mode, cool, set the temperature, high or low, run it off auto, and shut it off, and you're all set to go. Let's go down here and check out the living room and garage. All right, so back here in the garage or the second living area, right now we have the beds in the bunk position, so sleeping position. All right, I'm gonna show you how to raise those up to the top and then lock this up so you can pull in your toys. So you're gonna come down here and there is an instruction sticker right here so you can see that if you ever forget. You're just gonna flip this out to the out position, okay? Then you're gonna come over here, there's a little button on the wall that says up and down. I'm gonna raise that up. You can see that's going up there. Once it reaches this bed here, it'll take them clear to the top until you'll hear the clicking sound. Then you're all locked in position. All right, now that we have the top bunk locked in place, we'll lower down these legs. And I'll show you how to set up the booth style seating. So we'll open up both legs here. So those are in the down position. We'll hold down this button, which will lower down just the seating area since we locked that in place. This will lower down until that leg hits the ground. And then we'll fold these over, make it into a nice bench. All right, now that the lower portion's all the way down, we're gonna lift up on this back side, and we're just gonna fold these together, and that'll fold into a bench. You're gonna do the same thing on the other side, so I'm gonna lift up on this side and on the back. Folds up, and you can have seating 
right across from each other. All right, so now that we have the bottom bed up about halfway, I'm gonna show you how to lower this down for the transit position. So you're gonna take here and you're gonna lift up just slightly. You're gonna push this in against the wall, okay? And you're gonna come over here, same way, lift it up slightly, lower it down, and then you're gonna come in here, fold up the leg, and there's a bar right underneath here. Now you're gonna lift up one, pull towards you, then you're gonna lower it down until it hits the floor. And do the same thing on this side. Fold the leg up, grab the bar, and you're gonna lift up, pull right towards you, lower it down. And then you're gonna come over here to the button. You're gonna raise it up. It'll go up against the wall. We'll flatten out the couches and it'll be in travel position. All right, so now that we have the beds all the way up, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and flatten out the couch portion, both sides. And then there's gonna be a little hole that you're gonna see right here above this rail. You're gonna take these clips, which you'll have four of them. You're gonna push it through. Lock it in, and you're gonna put those on each side. So there's one here, one back here on this corner, and then one up here on this corner. So I'll show you this front one on this side as well. Put it right through, locks in place. That's gonna keep it from jarring and bouncing during transit. So now you have your UTV, side-by-side, -side, quads, whatever. You're ready to, to go and move forward. All right, hopefully your camper's all set up and you're getting ready to enjoy it under the awning. Uh, we appreciate you watching our video today. If you would, if you have any other questions, go to our website at forestriverinc.com or any of our social media sites. Thank you and have a great day.